when the nerve impulse reaches the nerve terminal with the release of the neurotransmitter that is the acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction there is generation of n plate potential and uh, when n plate potential reaches a threshold which always happens in physiological conditions there is generation of action potential now this action potential that is the electrical activity on the muscle membrane leads to the generation of mechanical activity so excitation contraction coupling is basically the coupling between the excitation that is the action potential on the muscle membrane with the contraction that is the mechanical activity of the muscle now for excitation contraction coupling to happen this electrical activity that is the action potential should travel along the muscle membrane fiber and reach to the t tubules uh, these t tubules are uh, basically invaginations of the muscle membrane which dip into the muscle now why is it important because we have to link the action potential with the release of the calcium which is responsible for contraction and this calcium should release into the sarcoplasm so this linking of excitation and contraction is brought by interaction of t tubules that is the invagination of the muscle membrane with the l tubules so here both are l tubules that is the sarcoplasmic reticulum uh, which is basically smooth endoplasmic reticulum so t tubules are basically present transversely that is why the name t tubules t for transverse and uh, this smooth endoplasmic uh, reticulum which is present in close contact with the t tubules is present longitudinally and that is why the term l tubules and uh, this interaction of t tubules and l tubules forms a triad so there is one t tubule and two l tubules and this is known as sarcoplasmic triad and this is responsible for the release of calcium so how that is happening on this t tubules are present receptors known as dhpr receptors dihydropyridine receptors and on the l tubules are present another receptors or basically these are channels known as rvir or rhinodine receptors so when the action potential travels along the membrane what happens that there is physical interaction between this dhpr and rvir and this causes the opening of these rvir so these are basically ligand gated channels so this dhpr is voltage gated channels and these voltage gated channels interact with rvir and cause the opening of these rhinodine receptors and cause the release of calcium from smooth endoplasmic reticulum so as rvir opens calcium enters into the sarcoplasm so this smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a huge storehouse of calcium so in a skeletal muscle remember it is a physical interaction between dhpr present on the t tubules and rvir present on the l tubules which is responsible for release of the calcium on the other hand in a smooth muscle and cardiac muscle what happens so that in action potential there is entry of calcium so in skeletal muscle action potential is due to the entry of sodium ions but in smooth muscles the depolarization phase is due to the entry of uh, calcium ions and in ventricular action potential or atrial action potential the plateau phase there is entry of calcium ions and this calcium ions basically interact with the rhinodine receptors which are present on the l tubules so that's why i'm saying that these are ligand gated channels and this interaction causes the release of calcium so that is known as calcium induced calcium release this calcium induced calcium release is important for the release of calcium in a smooth muscle and cardiac muscle but in a skeletal muscle it is only the intracellular source of calcium that is the calcium present in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is released by physical interaction fine now this calcium interacts with the troponin and ultimately leads to the contraction of the muscle but for relaxation it is important that this calcium should enter back into the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and that is brought about by a pump known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum 
calcium ATPs. Again, this pump is uh, present on the membrane of uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum and as soon as calcium is released, they start functioning more causing the pumping of calcium back into the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and thus leading to relaxation. So fundamentally, it is the release of calcium which is linking the excitation that is the action potential with the mechanical activity that is the contraction. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.